All right, so here we got the uh, bass I'm working on today, six string. It's a uh, Ibanez SDGR, beautiful color. I mean, it's just gorgeous. Anyway, uh, unfortunately, I noticed it's also got a slight forward bow to it, and that happens with six strings, you know. But before I started playing with this guitar, messing with it, monkeying with it, I did check to make sure that thrust rod works on it. And it does so. After I've made my measurement, I'm going ahead and straighten this guitar's neck out, put it back flat and straight again, get that settled real quick, because I can't cut the nut with the uh, neck bow like that, it won't come out right, especially when it gets straightened up later on, the nut won't fit. Now, what's weird about this guitar is that uh, the slot that holds the uh, nut is off a little bit because it's held in along with the uh, truss rod, okay? That's not the best, I'm uh, sorry, it's held in along with the truss rod cover, right? Let's see if I can show that to you. See this right here? And that's a little bit off, it's a little bit, it's a little cocked. And the uh, cut on the uh, neck is a little bit bowed like that. <laughs> so I got an awkward fit there, guys, I gotta work with somehow. Figure out the dynamics of that and see what I got to do to make that work right. And what I may have to do is to just slightly move this cover down to make it fit properly. I won't uh, let the whole show, but uh, I don't think I've got very much room to work with here. Got to see how much more I got to do to how far it's got to go to make that adjustment. Aha! And of course, this does have a, a, a two a truss rod setup on it. Take a look here. See the two truss rods? There you go. <laughs> Always fun to work with. And pretty much necessary to have on a uh, you know, six string bass. Must have, must have. All right, let me get this thing working and get that uh, neck relief on there so I can get that fixed. Okay, hang in there guys. Well, this is my second attempt on the uh, bone up the six string. Uh, my first one, uh, I just started the rough end, and uh, look what happened. I really overdid the radius on it. If you can see this or not. See, how I tried to follow the radius of the uh, neck, and it's really overdid it. And a friend of mine said, "Well, can't you adjust that?" I said, "Yeah, but it just wouldn't be right. I had to probably end up shimming it." So, here we are again. Now, as I said before, what I'm going to do is take my saw, right? You always saw before you file, okay? And I'll, I'll cut into it with a 15th thousandth file, right in the middle. I'm sorry if my hands are in the way, but I got to guide this thing just perfectly so that it won't slip. Just like that. Make my stroke. So that my file will catch. And it's a pull saw, so it's gonna give me the most resistance when I pull it. But that's deep enough to get it started, okay? And here's the center line on the next one. Try to line up on that. Sorry guys, I'm trying to just get the center line started with this this saw. So that my files can follow it. You never try to cut a uh, bone nut with a saw. You just try to start with it. And starting it in the right spot is so critical. Trying to get right in the middle of these lines. There we go. Whoopsie. I don't want to chip it. Steepen up on that one. You can see this too well or not, but uh, anyhow, I'm gonna cut away and uh, bring this tripod up so that you can see it's a little bit better looking down at it. 
I don't think you can see that better, guys, but of course now the darn camera's in my way. <laughs> what I try to do is just do the best I can because I got to use both hands to steady this with and make sure I stay in the middle and it doesn't slide off like that or like that on my stroke. And all I got to do is kind of just get it started with this width of a file. I sort of saw. <laughs> get it down that first line. So let my uh, file will follow the rest of it. Okay, same thing with this one. So I get perfectly in the middle. Down that first line like that. And of course the width changes as it change strings and we got six strings we got a huge B string on this thing all right and the middle is right there all right so there's your first cuts and next you follow up with the uh, file so hang in there well, I'll start with the 125 first. I'll just get right in there at it. Here we go. Make sure I keep that straight and the groove on the line. So I got to start on it. Back some. You see it's starting to take shape. That's what I want. Alrighty. Next one is a 96. Okie dokie. All right, there she is. She's rough cut. And of course, when the uh, <laughs> when it's time to really get down to the nut cutting, <laughs> filing actually, we use this little jewel tool here. And these are like heaven sent. Look at this thing. It is absolutely amazing how this thing works. I mean, I just finished cutting a bone nut for a guitar. I got that down to 20 thousandths and it just plays with no buzz, no nothing. And I follow the contour of that neck by two thousandths uh, up and over on that, on that 12 degree uh, radius. If you know what I'm talking about, it's like, oh man, that is pretty slick. <laughs> so anyway, I am definitely sold on those little tools. And anybody who's cutting you a bone nut, guys, they don't have one of those tools. They're still doing it the old-fashioned way with feeler gauges and a half pencil. Man, I, I strongly suggest they get one of these. So have you seen this? These things are just heaven sent. It's like, thank you, Stu Mac. Well, I guess it's about a good time as any to address this. Now, when I talk about this, I talk about the radius of these bass guitars as well as the uh, guitars themselves. Uh, I've had people write me uh, recently and ask me, how can I just look at something and know what the radius is? Well, I can't. <laughs> I know from you know experience what some guitar makers you know manufacture there's to be, but uh, I've got a radius gauge. They look like this, okay? All these different radius they all come in. I haven't found one yet. Then you know unless it's homemade guitar, but all the uh, manufactured ones that's what I find, okay? They're they're on this little ring here, on my little whistle, so I don't lose these things. Uh, 
then a guy asked me, uh, well, what about the uh, uh, different uh, widths of streams? You don't have a, uh, you don't have enough uh, files there to cover every width, do you? And well, yeah, mainly I do. Uh, there may be a few off, like I may have like a size 32, and I come across one that's a 34. And what I do, guys, I take this little uh, set of tools here, and I open them up. And least of, but not last of all, uh, I got these little brass tools here that uh, tell me the uh, height of the pickups, right, to the strings. So I got the height of the pickups to the strings, I got the heights of the frets on basses and guitars with this little jewel tool here, and this one here, one for guitars, one for bass, and uh, just worked perfectly. I cannot be more proud of those two little tools. Anyway, that's how you do it, guys. Those I hope those answer your questions. So hang in there. Well, I guess it's about good time as any to address this. Now, when I talk about this, I talk about the radius of these bass guitars as well as the uh, guitars themselves. Uh, I've had people write me uh, recently and ask me, how can I just look at something and know what the radius is? Well, I can't. <laughs> I know from you know experience what some guitar makers you know manufacture theirs to be, but uh, I've got a radius gauge. They look like this, okay? All these different radiuses they all come in. I haven't found one yet. Then you know unless it's homemade guitar, but all the uh, manufactured ones that's what I find, okay? They're they're on this little ring here, all of my little whistles so I don't lose these things. Uh, then a guy asked me, uh, well, what about the uh, uh, different uh, widths of strings. You don't have a, uh, you don't have enough uh, files there to cover every width, do you? And well, yeah, mainly I do. Uh, there may be a few off, like I may have like a size 32, and I come across one that's a 34. And what I do, guys, I take this little uh, set of tools here, and I open them up, right? So I open up three thousandths or whatever it may be. And least, of, but not last of all, uh, I got these little brass tools here that uh, tell me the uh, height of the pickups, right, to the strings. So I got the height of the pickups to the strings, I got the heights of the frets on basses and guitars with this little jewel tool here, and this one here, one for guitars, one for bass, and uh, just worked perfectly. I cannot be more proud of those two little tools. Anyway, that's how you do it, guys. Those, I hope those answer your questions, so hang in there. Okay, well, uh, gosh, that's close. I don't need to uh, move the uh, truss rod cover down very much to capture the nut and have it held you know, firmly against it. But uh, with this six string, I'll have to glue it in in several spots before I just glue it all up with the... Uh, tight bond glue not not the uh, super glue the uh, tight bond so it could be knocked out later on that make a mess of things but uh, I may be able to bring it down just enough to make this thing work or I may be able to come over just a tiny bit so I can put uh, two new drill holes in this as well as this top one and not having it show and uh, you had to take a scale to see how much it, you know the movement I made <laughs> just to make that uh, work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because if I come in straight as it is, we're back on that green line again, and that's just too wide for the the uh, widest piece of bone I own. <laughs> the blanks I own just too wide like that. If I come in just a tiny bit and just move it over just a you know hair. To capture, you know, three new drill holes, well, it'd work. All right, that's what I want to do. And no one can tell a difference unless you got in there with a ruler or a scale and measured it up and figured out what had happened. So hang in there. Well, this is one of the reasons why I tell you everybody bring new strings when they come, uh, especially on your bass strings, guys. Uh, these get old and. When I, I'm making a, a nut for these, a bone nut, I have to tune them up and down, up and down a lot. And unfortunately, they snap on me. This is the second string out of this set that's broken on me. Uh, first string was the uh, G string, now the C string snapped on me. And uh, 
he calls me up and says, hey, you owe me for a set of strings on these things. Basically, these guys, it's best to do is just bring a new set of strings with you. The older set cannot take them, all right? You can't take that strain of going up and down, up and down, up and down. And that's about the only way I can make one of these nuts for these things. I got to test them in and out of that nut constantly. And the older ones just can't take it, all righty? So, uh, doggone it. I'll spring for another string. It's not my fault. The, these strings are old, but uh, that really is frustrating. Okay? And I don't have time to go to the store and buy a new one, so I'll use a set that I've got. And they're a lot more expensive than these. So, uh, doggone it. Let's just go ahead and get strung up and get this done. Measurements with this little jewel tool here to find out exactly uh, how high my strings were above my first fret with my new bone nut, right? So, what I've got is a uh, 80 on the E and the V. I've got uh, 8 on the uh, E, 98 on the A, 79 on the D, and 95 on the G, and 99 on the C, okay? Well, what I'm going to do is take 40 thousandths off the bottom of this nut and give it a shape. Uh, let's see. What can I draw this on? I get a shape, not uh, 90 degrees, but just slightly more of a base to this, and uh, takes care of the issue of that space. See that space between this? I've got to broaden the base of this thing, but I can't add, you know, girth to it. But I can actually angle it out some so that uh, it, uh, you know, gets closer to the, uh, um, gosh, the truss rod cover. And that's the whole problem is the slot for this uh, guitar is just too wide for the uh, normal bone nut. Uh, same with plastic; they're all glued. This, you know, they're all glued in there, you know, completely. You just have to knock the crap out and get them out with super glue. And I don't want to super glue it up again. I want to put uh, a couple of drops in there. And what I thought about doing was drilling new holes in this, where you barely see them. And pulling that truss rod cover uh, further down against the nut itself, uh, but since so I got to take off forty thousand of the bottom anyway, that'll help me with the height as well. Just the uh, drop itself, it come down some. Uh, I still have to finish rounding this off uh, and get these in line, right? And as they sit right now, uh, they're about right. There's a few that need to be adjusted properly. They're a little too deep in the nut. And when I do with that, guys, I actually will file the uh, top of the nut down. Uh, I don't dig it. I don't dig it any deeper. I don't file it any deeper than they already are. They're fine as they are. But I want some of that string exposed a little bit more here, 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 and here on these first three. So all I'll do is I'll shave the uh, top off, and that gives me uh, more, you know, uh, more string above the nut. Give it uh, more. Uh, Oh, more sustain, get a better uh, tone to it, da 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 on and on. So, yeah, all this planning just to make a guitar nut. Isn't that wild? <laughs> but if it wasn't for this little jewel tool here, I would still be using a half a pencil and a uh, set of feeler gauges trying to guess, you know, make an educated guess at, at how high my uh, strings were and try to eyeball it with a scale. But uh, these here, for the uh, bass and for the guitars, unbelievably good. So hang in there while I take this nut out and I start uh, prepping the bottom as well as start working on shaving the top down to get this thing, you know, back down where it belongs and just barely above the string, uh, the, sorry, barely above the first fret where it belongs. Okay, so what I've decided to do is take off, just at first, I'll take off uh, 30 thousandths, which is this right here. Cross my little line, just below that line, be exactly 30 thousandths, and come back in and test it once again. But at the same time, I want to put a little angle at it. You see this angle, this uh, stripe? There you go. Now you can see it. That's that's above the line I want to score on. But So when I'm doing this by hand, I'll be slightly taking it in at an angle each time to help widen out this base. Uh, it's an old trick, but uh, it should work. It should work pretty well. But uh, I'll go in there and score a lineup to uh, match the uh, right profile uh, along with this, you know, it matches up with this line here. So, hang anyway, switch the camera around and I'm going to uh, see me mess, make a mess of this. But I'm almost finished with it, so it's probably about time to break it up and make, you know, make. 
Well, so now it's time to start the lowering process, and we're going to drop it down this first line here, but at a slight angle, right? Just like this. So, by making that small change to the footprint on that nut, and this little angle back, it gives me a larger area to capture, you know, more space on that board, right, on that wood, so that uh, the truss rod cover, if you can see that as well, is pressing now against it, and it's pressing against the front of the uh, fretboard as well. Now, the trick is to lower it. Uh, according to my measurements, what I come up with, and I think I'm going to come down another twenty thousandths at the most, but we'll see. We'll see. Hang in there. All right, we're working on that uh, Dean guitar now. But here's a couple things I wanted to make sure that people heard that may not be just apparent. Now, I may not have covered them before, just thinking you know, not to mention it. Okay, first of all. Save all your pieces. Anything you cut away, even little chunks like that, will come in handy. You can use them for filler, grind up what you have to use them for. Save them. Uh, sometimes they're invaluable for shims and such. Next, uh, what else? When you're cutting uh, or pre-cutting these uh, nuts, uh, what you want to do is use a you know decently wide saw. Like this is a 30, but we never use a 30 on like a 28. You follow me on a 28 cut, width cut. I always go something like a 20, okay, like this one, all right? But all the rest of these are wider than that, 42, 50, 60, up to 105. And I'd center it up and cut with this wider saw, make it easier for me to get my file in there for it to, you know, follow, you know, file properly, all right? And when you have like a 125 uh, width string on your uh, base, if you file 125 uh, uh, width uh, uh, nut slot, it's going to be so tight it drags. So when you try, you know, when you try to tune the string, it actually pulls inside the nut, and it'll actually you end up breaking your strings. Uh, some people I know put nut grease on those, but the best thing to do is get like a rat tail file, like this one here. And open it up a little bit towards the back, not the front, but towards the back, right? Just left to right, side to side. Open up a little bit past that 125 exact. And these uh, files are exacting. They're 42 on the front. It, that is, if it says 42, it's 42, okay? And there's no side file to it. It's nice and smooth on the sides, all right? No serrations all smooth the only file you got is right here on the edges where it belongs so you can't just uh get in there wall waller it out you got to get you actually have to have a uh, rat tail get in there open it up a little bit of course you don't make size 128 file <laughs> which is what you need but three to four thousands uh wider that's what you want to do so the string can you know go in and out easily slide on that nut not uh binding it because it's exactly the same width as the string is that won't help you much uh something else uh once you finish doing all the cutting you're you're totally wrapped up and finished uh most people don't realize you need to polish these nuts up right beyond that uh, rough uh dry type bone uh finish what you do is you take a piece of uh steel wool like triple lot steel wool and you just polish the crap out of it Right until it's nice and shiny, kind of semi shiny, and there's no uh, porous look to it anymore, and it's nice and really smooth feeling rather than gritty. Uh, it's kind of like when you, if you're a baseball player, it's called boning the uh, bat, where you actually take some bone and rub on the wood of the bat, pressing it down to make it stronger. Well, same thing applies when you, when you shine these things up, when you polish them up. Uh, in my opinion, it makes them harder, which is what you want. You don't want them chipping. So, something else to remember. Uh, last thing real quickly, on these edges. If you look, you got 12, uh, 14 edges, uh, 16, 18 edges to deal with when you do these things. Right here's a plastic one. But each of these uh, grooves has a, two edges, right? And it's best to take that right, same rat tail file and hit these edges, right? And smooth them down 
oopsie, smooth them down before you put the string in there for good. That way you don't have a chipper on you, right? Simply just smooth it down. Uh, then if it ain't fancy, just smooth that edge down, make it smooth as smooth as you can with the rat tail. And uh, after which, uh, you won't have any splitters or chippers, right? Because when it chips on that tip, which is that they're more prone to do that, uh, chip on the tip, <laughs> uh, well, they don't just chip that one little spot. They could chip uh, all the way down the, the nut, you know what I'm saying? So it's best just to knock that little uh, pointy thing off there uh, to begin with before it has a chance to chip and continue to chip and chip and chip. And lastly, uh, once a month, I'd say put a little bit of oil, you know, on your uh, uh, slots. Uh, that the stuff I keep pointing at and uh, talking about <clears throat> at Ace Hardware, it's super lube. And it's perfect for bone nuts. You don't want these to get real dry and brittle on you. So you put one drop on top or by the edge, on the base string you put on the edge by the bone, nut, and your string. And just kind of rub it in. Okie dokie. And uh, what else? What are the little tips I can think about? Uh, when you're doing this, be aware that you're going to plant up, uh, uh, maybe breaking some strings. So you got to be real careful because you might find a slot, it's 125. Well, say no, it's a, a 28, okay? And the 28 uh, slot has been just, just you know, brand new uh, filed. And uh, you, you tighten the, or you tune the guitar up and it drops down into the slot and now it's stuck there. And it's not going to go forward or backward. Uh, because it, the nut's so tight, it's just grabbed it, right? It's grabbed, it's holding on to it. Uh, that's when you have problems, when you try to pull it up and out, right? Well, the smart thing to do to keep it from chipping is to loosen up that string, uh, make sure it's loose on the, both sides of the nut uh, as much as you can, and then lift it up, you know, both sides. Don't pull up from one side only, from the back of the front. Pull up both sides gently, and don't work it like you would have saw don't work it back and forth like that. Pull it straight up, right? Gently, and it's, you know, if, it chi if you have a chance to do it, it's also good. Just drop some oil on there before you pull it up and out. <coughs> Help me keep it uh, slippery. I think that's all the, the overall tips I can uh, point out to you right now. But if I come across something I can remember again, it's time to use the little uh, jewel tool or tool jewel. And the problem is, it's not really meant for six strings, but you can make it by just pushing the strings out of the way. And the thing is, to dial it to zero, which you won't want it to drop, so I can see if you can see this or not. Uh, probably not. Let's try it like that. Just around a bit, like that. Dial it to zero, and then you push down your string right beside it. Be careful. And you get a reading of 78. All right. 78. 76. 70. Uh, 76. Okay, 76. All right. All right, let's go to the next one. So we got there. And of course, these change. Your zero mark changes a little bit usually. But I got it in there, right? Maybe not. Okay, what have I got for this one? Wow, I've got 106. <laughs> you see that, 106? 106, all right, amazing. That's how much high it's off the top of that uh, fret. A string. Much easier to find it on that one, okay. Wow. <laughs> Look at this, guys. We are... Well, wait a minute, let's get back to zero. All right, zero. 125, looks like. 125. Hold on. 122. 122. Of course, we're missing the next two. Those broke. <laughs> Strings get old and they snap, especially pulling through a, a bone nut. Well, I don't know if you can see it or not, guys, but it's just, <clears throat> just a couple of uh, file marks, but 
just from me looking at it, it's very clear that uh, I do a much better job with that darn camera in the way and my lines come out uh, more precise and my uh, file uh, slots are much more accurate. I had to worry about getting around that camera. So, unfortunately that means the camera's going to have to get out of my way. Or, <laughs> basically it just can't be in my way. Alright, that's about as good as I can get it, guys. I'm trying to improve the quality of the uh, these videos the best I can. I'm just not very good at it. <laughs> Alright, what's next is a... Uh, that's 60, 60, okay. Right, size 60. I hope y'all can see this, but I, you know, I've gotta be able to see what I'm doing without that camera in my way. What I'm doing, I'm just basically doing this about a 33 to 45 degree angle of the nut. Keeping it as straight as I can. Make an angle back towards towards me. To finish it off and uh, knock anything over that uh, is in the back. I could tip, make sure it's finished. There we go, now it's gone. Except for some sludge that came off, <laughs> where that came from. Now, now we have a preliminary nut to work with, and I'll take that little chip off there. <laughs> 